Hello! Welcome to Chasm Words. My name is Sam and I'm so happy to see you here. Today I'm going to be talking about my job and I work at Barnes & Noble. So here are 10 Barnes & Noble secrets. So once again, hi, hello, I'm really happy to see you. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great day. Over here it is feeling like spring, even if it is not 100% looking like spring yet. We've got the gray sky, but we've got the spring breeze and it is beautiful, I love it. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, please subscribe. I'd love to have you returning. I'd love to see you more. I post videos about books and book related contents every week. Most of the times it's twice a week. Lately I've kind of had a spell of doing once a week because I've just had some mental stuff going on, but I would like to get back up to twice a week, which would be Thursdays and Mondays. What is today's video? Today's video is 10 secrets about working in Barnes and & Noble, and I don't know if secret is like exactly the right term. These aren't like trade secrets, these aren't like juicy gossipy secrets, like I don't know anything like that, but they are maybe things you don't know about working in Barnes & Noble, or things I didn't know about Barnes & Noble until I've been working there. I started working in Barnes & Noble originally in October of 2019. I was hired on part-time for holiday work, but was offered to stay on after the holidays, and I love it there. I love Barnes & Noble. This is not the Barnes & Noble location that I grew up going to. That one actually closed down. But this one is just as magnificent. I love it there. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. This, I'm totally shilling for the company. I really like it. I'm not gonna say it's like the perfect company and that there aren't issues on like a grander scale, but I do, I love Barnes & Noble. I love my job of so much about working in a bookstore. But I was originally hired in October of 2019. In March of 2020, I was laid off because of the coronavirus and that was horrible and heartbreaking and if you've ever been laid off I think you could probably relate but there is this absolute feeling of disappointment and failure even though it's not your fault that you got laid off and it was really hard for me to get over mentally I don't blame the company at all I don't think it's the company's fault obviously it was a global pandemic I totally get that layoffs had to happen it was just really sad for me personally to be like, oh no. But I knew that as soon as possible, I would definitely be applying for a job there again because I really wanted to return. And um, lo and behold, October of 2020, and I'm back in my old job and it is great. I was hired back as part-time, but I actually work full-time now. So I am there five days a week, eight hours a day, uh, more like eight and a half hours a day actually. And yeah, I love it. It's it's still a great job. I think full time for me is I like being there. So it is now March of 2021 and I'm still working there and I have plans to work there for as long as I feasibly can because I really love it. Totally biased about this job. It is retail, so there are negatives. Like with all retail jobs, there are customers who can be awful. I've had customers say just, incredibly horrible things to me and I should have reported it to a manager at the time but I was so in shock that I didn't like those kind of horrible things. That's not the norm. Most of our customers are really kind based on my experience working here and other retail and public service type jobs. This has definitely the best customers. They are generally nicer, generally I think maybe because it is such a specific store like you go into a bookstore looking for books they expect something from you and as long as you can deliver it they're happy so i do i really i really think that we have some pretty great customers also all our regulars are just really sweet like i think that it's easy to be like oh yeah some regulars are weirdos but we we really get luck with our regulars they're all really great i rambled enough about that so let's just get into the 10 secrets of working at barnes and noble number one we get free books and yes, I am 100% talking about ARCs. We get ARCs fairly regularly. A lot of the times they're ARCs for books that are gonna be bestsellers or already have a lot of hype. We don't get like ARCs for stuff that is unknown really. I think ARCs do get given to stores based on what kind of books sell well there. Although I don't have like proof of that. A lot of the ARCs we get just don't appeal to me personally. I recently brought home a bunch for my mom because I was like, these seem like books you would like and she was really happy but my mom and I are very different demographics. I have gotten a couple really great arcs. I got Clara and the Sun. I got Chain of Gold as an arc, like amazing, amazing. We also, as employees of Barnes & Noble, get access to the Barnes & Noble community on Edelweiss, so I can pick up arcs that way, which I have done a couple times. 
and you'll definitely be seeing reviews for those in my next wrap up. It's great. It's 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 early access to books. It's free books. It's great. And fact number two, it kind of goes along with this. We can actually borrow books from the store. Basically with a hardcover book, if you don't want to buy it, maybe it's a book that's doing well and you want to be able to talk about it with customers, but you don't actually want to spend the money on it because it's not the kind of book you normally read or you don't want it on your shelf or you're trying to save money, whatever the reason, you can borrow the book from the store. I think it's like for 14 days. Basically you have to turn in the dust jacket and you have to take care of the hardcover and make sure that it comes back in a sellable condition. If it doesn't, you have to purchase it, which makes sense. But like 14 days is a pretty good length of time. I think you're only allowed to borrow one book at a time, but again, that's not really an issue if you work at a bookstore and you come in regularly. I've never personally taken advantage of this just because I'm the kind of person who if I'm like, oh, I might read that book, I buy it. I have no self-control, but I know a lot of people who have taken advantage of this and they really like it. They think it's a great way to read books. And I'm like, yes, it is a great way to read books. I just spend my money too freely. <laughs> you, we can also technically rent the nooks. I think that's only for two days though. I've never felt the need to do that. I already kind of understand how nooks work, which is the main reason for renting a nook so that you understand the equipment because we do actually get a lot of customers coming into the store asking questions about how nooks work, whether they already have one and they're having issues or they're thinking about picking one up which, and this isn't like a Barnes and Noble secret, but again, this is me shilling for the company. If you're considering getting a Nook or a Kindle, 100% recommend the Nook because you can bring it into the store and be like, I have issues. We're not tech support, but eight times out of 10, we can help you with the problem or we can tell you exactly what the problem is and give you a number to contact and be like, ask about this and they can help you because they are tech support. So yeah, I have had some weird things where I'm like, I have no idea how to help you. Um, and I've called tech support and like they haven't known either. That's only happened once for the most part. It's been, if I can't help you, let's talk to Nook tech support. If they can't help you, that's weird. But yeah, so Nooks, we can rent them. Books, we can rent them. Secret number three, the discount is amazing. Full disclosure, job, of a part-time employee at Barnes & Noble. It does not pay well, you get paid minimum wage. For me, that wasn't a huge issue because I live at home, but it it is a thing like you should take into consideration if you're thinking about applying there. Also, it wasn't a huge issue for me because like a saving grace was the discount. Our discount is so generous. Generous? Our discount is so generous. And like, I spend pretty much all of my disposable income on books, so the discount allows me to spend even more money on books or less money on more books, I should say. So for books and cafe items, we get 40% off. 40% off of books, all books. Oh my God, you have life changing. When I got that discount, it was life changing. You have no idea. I joke around, I'm like, the discount's the best part of the job. That's not like strictly true, but it's not not true. For toys and games, and games are another thing I spend a lot of money on, we get 30% off. So that's also awesome. That's also incredibly generous. Music and movies, we get 20% off. Again, I think that's really great. Like, considering we're a bookstore, getting anything off that's like awesome. I don't spend a lot of money on music or movies because everything I get is digital pretty much, but it's nice to know. Recently, I uh, this isn't going up until after my brother's birthday, so I can say it. I got my brother a turntable and I was able to pick up a lot of vinyl at work with a nice little discount. We also get 15% off of Nook devices. I haven't bought a Nook. I've thought about it. I just don't really like reading things digitally. It's harder for me to read books digitally. The older I get, the harder it becomes to read that way. Secret numbers four and five have to do with cafe. I've never worked in cafe. I'm trained in pretty much everything else in the store, but I haven't been training cafe yet but I do know a little bit about it. Number one being, while our drinks are Starbucks products, our food is actually supplied by Cheesecake Factory. I don't think that's a regional thing. I think that's across the whole chain. I could be wrong, but at least what I understand to be is across the whole chain, our food, our pastries, our desserts are provided by Cheesecake Factory, which means secret number five, you can buy a whole cheesecake at Barnes & Noble. I'm not even kidding, an entire cheesecake. I've done it in the past. I can't eat cheesecake, so I buy it as like gifts for people but you can get a whole freaking cheesecake and it's huge. It's huge. Like it's bigger than I thought it was and heavy, very hefty. So we don't have the huge Cheesecake Factory menu, obviously we're not at Cheesecake Factory, but you, at least at my location, you can get three different flavors. There's plain, there's chocolate, and then there's Oreo. This is like a bonus secret. 
But if you get a cookie at Barnes & Noble, ask them to microwave it for you if they don't like offer because it it's so good when it's warm and it tastes just as fresh as if it just came out. Like the cookies are always fresh when they microwave it. It just like levels the cookie up. It's so good. Secret number six. So when we get new books in, there's two things that can happen. One is that they're embargoed and embargoed books and items cannot sold, cannot be sold prior to the release date. There are fewer embargoed books than you might think. Like big name authors obviously are embargoed right now. Well today actually the fit day I'm filming this Rule of Wolves is coming out but that book was embargoed. We got it like two weeks early but we couldn't put it on the floor. That doesn't mean that I can't go back there and like stroke it and be like, hello book. I'm so excited for you, which I do because I'm that kind of freak. Books that aren't embargoed, we can actually start selling as soon as we get them. We do kind of try to keep an eye on that. Sometimes we don't catch everything. If it's a major release, it's normally embargoed. If it's not a major release though, like maybe there's like one paperback we got, it ends up on the floor early. So that's why you might see books on the floor early. It's just not embargoed and it's here. A lot of times paperback printings of hardcover book they're not embargoed they're just put out especially like YA books I know what was one that I saw recently that I was like oh this is out like a day oh the Crescent City paperback we got it like two days earlier than it's like official release so we just put it out like people are gonna buy it but we do try to keep an eye on it if something isn't like embargoed and we're like pretty sure it should be or like we got such a quantity it's weird that it's not we all we do try to, to keep, try to keep track of that and this isn't like a secret for Barnes and Noble so much as just like book selling I guess. James Patterson actually gets a special release day which is Mondays. Most new books come out on Tuesdays. Like I said I'm filming this on a Tuesday. Rule of Wolves is coming out today but if James Patterson had had a new book it probably would have come out yesterday on Monday. He gets his own special release day and his books do they come embargoed pretty much every single one and he releases books frequently which isn't a surprise. Secret number seven. As much as I get recommendations like if someone comes up to me and they're like, I'm looking for a book that's like X, Y, and Z. The recommendation I might give the customer, it might come from my own experience of reading, it might come from what I've talked to with my coworkers, but it also might come from what I've talked to with customers. You get a surprising amount of recommendations from customers, either just seeing what's selling really well or talking to them. Sometimes I do get like unsolicited recommendations. Like one time I was in a conversation with a customer for longer than I tried to be, like I kept trying to like step out of the conversation because she wanted a book and I recommended a book and I was like oh you know like I think this would work and she's like oh cool perfect and she picked it up and bought it but then she was like telling me all these books she had been reading I was like this is cool but I am working like I do need to like go every time I tried to get away she would just tell me like books she recommended and like that kind of thing is kind of annoying especially when there are other customers to take care of but for the most part it's not annoying and it's really helpful when customers want to recommend you a book or two and just talk about their experience reading. Again especially like regular customers or customers who read regular well I guess that is just a regular customer but yeah especially regular customers they tell you what they're reading it's a great way to then pass it on to other customers who want something similar. Obviously social media does play a part of it. I'm really active on social media at least in taking content even when I'm not putting content out and that's really important. Recently we've really as a company and especially at my location taken TikTok into our sort of attention. We've got a TikTok table with like popular TikTok books. We are working on creating a store TikTok. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if it's happening. Like couldn't tell you. That is uh, something that we do take into consideration and we get a lot of recommendations from other customers which I don't know if it's like a secret secret but I think it's really interesting because it's not something I ever thought about until I started working there. Secret number eight. I've kind of talked about this a little bit already but there is a lot of brand loyalty. I don't know why I didn't expect this. Maybe just because in a lot of ways physical bookstores feel like they're on the way out which is incredibly sad. We especially with our regulars who tend to be older customers we see a lot of brand loyalty and these people come in all the time and they have been coming in all the time some of them since we opened our front doors and it's really great. A lot of times I'll even get people tell me they're like I love shopping here because I hate Amazon or I love being able to support a physical bookstore and I always I'm like thank you for saying that I love hearing that I also love physical bookstores and I appreciate you coming in so I don't know if it's a secret or a surprise but just the amount of brand loyalty is great and just warms my heart secret number nine we can kind of choose which books to sell in our store obviously there's a lot that goes into what books arrive and I'm not going to go into all of that 
it is interesting but I don't know every specific detail so as much information as I could give you there's probably more out there from better sources but one thing we're allowed to do is we can shortlist books so these are books that we think we can hand sell or we think would sell well in the store so if there's a book that you really love you can put in and basically order the store and be like I want three copies of this because I think I could hand sell it and I think that's awesome I think that really makes each store individualized and makes it personalized so yes maybe the book I'm recommending to you came from some customer recommending it to me but maybe it's a book that I love and keep on hand in the store so that I can be like this is perfect this book is amazing I love it so much you know I just think it's nice not everything you shortlist is going to appear in the store. It does go through like some checks ahead of time and you have to be really reasonable with re your requests. Like you can't like order like 20 books um, because what if you can't sell the 20 books? What if you can only sell one? So we do have to be very reasonable about it, but I still think it's really nice. Pay attention to like what a bookseller is like recommending you, especially if there's like a shelf talker from where they're pulling it from because maybe it really is one of their favorite books and they've had to like specially order it in. Which speaking of ordering, I didn't put it on like the secret list, but we're allowed to order books. You might come to a Barnes and Noble and be like, hey, I'm looking for this book. You don't have it. Can you order it? Well, we can order books for ourselves as well or like have a coworker basically order it for us, I should say. But like us as a community are allowed to order books for our own personal purchase. It's really nice because we don't always have every book in the store and we have access to a much wider variety through our website, our platform, you know. I do a fair amount of ordering because there's a lot of books I want. And as long as you have the ISBN, which if you ever go into a Barnes & Noble and you want a very specific copy of a book, like say a classic, maybe you want a Penguin Clothbound, those aren't super easy to get in America. But if you have an ISBN, we can order like half of them for you. So you don't have to like order from Book Depository. Pro tip, I've gotten some cloth bounds through us because I have the ISBN. Or this is also another pro tip. If you want like the penguin cloth bounds and you want to get them through a Barnes and Noble, ask them to look up the designer Coralie Bickard, Bickford Smith, I think her name is. I'll put it here. I'll probably link her Insta down below as well. Yeah, if you look her name up, a lot of the cloth bound classics up here. Okay, secret number 10. I don't know why this surprised me. Um, I don't think it's like strictly a secret, but I think it is surprising just based on my experience working in other customer service jobs. Like the other major customer service job I worked was at a home goods slash furniture store. So very different environment, but pretty much every single one of my coworkers is passionate about books or passionate about reading. And it's so great because the community is just really great. At my previous customer service job, no one was particularly passionate about furniture or home goods items. It was just a job. Here it is so much more than just a job. It is something that we hold near and dear to our heart. And I think that's great. And again, don't know if it's a secret secret, but I think it's not something that everyone thinks about or knows about when they walk into a Barnes & Noble, is that the people there actually care just as much or not more so than they do about the product, which it's really cute. We got like a memo about anything happening with the cash register is basically a new procedure, but on the memo, it was like when a customer picks up a book, they formed an emotional connection with the book. And I was like, oh my God, the whole company recognizes this. It's like, that's just how it works. Like, yes, every time I pick up a book and I'm like, I'm gonna buy this. That is, that's an emotional connection. And I just think that's like a perfect example of how much we as like individuals and as a company really care about the product. And I think that's really nice. So I just consider that secret number 10, I guess. So that's, that's my 10 secrets about working at Barnes & Noble. If you have any questions, if you want to know more secrets, let me know down in the comments. I love my job. Again, totally shilling for this company. And I'm not going to claim that it's a perfect company because no company or entity is perfect. But I really like it. I love it. I can't recommend strongly enough if you have the opportunity and the desire to work for a Barnes & Noble, try for it. It's a great job. And yeah, if you're applying for a Barnes & Noble job, and you have questions about how to make yourself just a better candidate, ask those questions down below and I will try to help you. Seriously, I cannot speak highly enough about my job. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I hope some of these facts surprised you. I, I think for me, the most surprising thing when I started working there was the Cheesecake Factory fact, but yeah, let me know what the most surprising fact was for you. And if you liked this video and wanna see more of my face, definitely subscribe. I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a great rest of your day, your night, your afternoon, whatever, and uh, enjoy your books. Bye.